Welcome on back to Skippers and welcome back to Must Draft Week. Today, we are doing three Must Draft infielders. Three guys I'm willing to stamp my name on for this upcoming fantasy baseball season. Tomorrow, we will be doing Must Draft outfielders, so subscribe and make sure you do not miss that as well. Let's get into these three players. First one is Royce Lewis of the Twins. He has an ADP of 63. Last season, played just under 60 games, but 309 average, 15 home runs, 52 driven in, stole six bags, and had a weighted runs created plus of 155. Royce Lewis has now played 70 major league baseball games, but all he's done is hit. And it's a sad start to a career as a former first overall pick who just can't seem to stay healthy. It seems very similar to another Minnesota twin uh, who wasn't first overall, but seems very similar to another Minnesota twin in Byron Buxton. Two guys who have some of the most talent in the league, but haven't been able to stay on the field. The upside for Royce Lewis is crazy in the 155 way to runs created plus shows just how good his 58 game stretch was. When you look at his numbers, I don't think long term Royce Lewis is over over a 300 hitter with a slug of 570 over a full season, but I still think he could hit 275 uh, with a ton of home runs, ton of great counting stats, runs batted in, while also stealing up to maybe 15 bases in a year. There are some regression signs. Uh, I mean, that his full 162 pace is off the charts. I don't think he is going to do that, and some of the regression uh, will hit him as well, but there is a very, very good fantasy asset uh, at the end of that still. Some of the signs include a batting average of balls in play last season of 354, which is insane because uh, it doesn't go towards BABIP if you hit home runs because those um, aren't in the yard at all. Uh, but I want to look at all the reasons why I think Royce Lewis will still be successful. For what has turned into a big power bat, Lewis has a really good approach. He has a walk rate that hovers around 10% and a strikeout rate around 22%. Those are both all things for a guy with his tools that is going to hit that many home runs. The swing and miss doesn't seem like a huge problem. Like I said when you see a power bat you think they're going to strike out every time they don't hit a home run the Joey Galloway but he's never shown huge swing and miss problem at any level he makes good contact in the zone as well as his zone contact percentage is league average at 85 percent no worries there Lewis crushed four seam fastball and sliders last season with a batting average over 333 on both of them and a slug on fastballs of 821. When you see someone that hits fastballs that well as a pitcher, you'd think um, the slider is the next go-to secondary to try and get swing and miss. And his whiff rate was only 1% uh, worse than that on fastballs at only 26%. He made the most of his opportunities to hit balls out of the yard and he's really good at elevating. Uh, it has a solid max exit velocity in the top 10% of the league. His average launch angle is perfect 16.2 degrees uh, barrel rate around 12 percent as well he's also a big time player you saw him in the wild card series i think he hit what, four home runs in the postseason as well i think he's only 24 years old royce lewis is going to be a stud i'm going to take another leap the leap looks a little bit different because the counting stats were so good last year but he is going to turn into a great fantasy asset i am going to be taking royce lewis the second player is a catcher that is also first base eligible so that adds to some roster flexibility which you have to love, and that is Yiner Diaz of the Astros. His ADP is 106. Last season, an average of 282, 23 home runs, 51 driven in. Couldn't steal any bases, but a weighted runs created plus of 127. The best part of fantasy baseball is that you don't have to worry about defense. And who knows how Yiner Diaz is going to handle a whole staff behind the dish, but luckily, we don't have to worry about that. Uh, Yadier Diaz provides corner infield production at a position that has really low upside. He's going to drive a ton of people in, hitting in a great lineup. He's going to hit pull side home runs into the Crawford boxes like it's going out of business. He's still a young kid, but he takes over a majority of the catching role. Thank God Dusty's gone and he can no longer play Martin Maldonado as he's also uh, not there and Yiner takes over. He is not going to help you in OBP leagues. So if, the, if your categories include on base percentage, do not pick him. He has a first percentile walk rate, but the counting stats everywhere else should be good. Let's look at some of the good numbers from last season. He had an expected batting average in the 92nd percentile, an expected slug in the 96th percentile. He had a barrel and sweet spot percentage over the 75th percentile, and he struck out under 20% of the time. I think I hate the catch catcher position a lot this season, but there's some fun guys like Francisco Alvarez, Yiner Diaz, uh, as well as guys like uh, Logan Ohapi as well. Diaz is a good average exit velocity guy. He has a good hard hit percentage. I think he can take another step to being a top fantasy 
catcher. The hype for him kind of feels similar to that of Will Smith from a few years ago. And when we were thinking about Will Smith, it was Austin Barnes who was going to get all the plate appearances for those two, even though Barnes shouldn't have gotten any of them looking back on it. Uh, I think Yander Diaz puts up the numbers that we expect from him at the end of this season. And we look back on how this was a great pick. And finally, the third guy. We finally have some more clarity on playing time for him. Christian Encarnacion Strand of the Reds. He has multiple position eligibility, so I just put him in here as an infielder. His ADP is 156. Last season, a 270 average. 13 home runs, 37 driven in. He stole two bags and a weighted runs created plus of 112. One of the biggest question marks uh, when it came to him was playing time for this upcoming season. And we got helped out by Noel V. Marte doing steroids. This should have Christian Encarnacion Strand playing every day while uh, Mar Marte is out for those 80 games. His numbers last season were great. And he gets to hit in an awesome lineup with a great ballpark. The only reason people seemed to be off him last season was the roster crunch in the infield for the Reds. And no one knew what was going to happen with playing time. He has some of the best raw power in the game. I don't even think we saw the best of it last season. He didn't strike out over 30%, which was a real worry when he came up. He hit everything well but four-seam fastballs last season. That is something I believe is an easy fix. He didn't hit enough to be uh, qualified, but he would have been well over league average in the following stats. Expect a weighted on base average, expect a batting average, expect a slug, average exit velocity, barrel percentage, hard hit percentage, and sweet spot percentage. There are some plate discipline things for him to fix as he still chases and whiffs a lot while not really walking, but I think he can be enough of a great American ballpark merchant to be fantasy relevant past the 10th rounds of your draft. As much as you can hate on splits and how they're presented. I'm just going to give you a fact. Christian Encarnacion Strand hit 304 with a 986 OPS and eight home runs in the final month of the season. It seemed that he found his footing at the big league level. And I don't think it's a hot take to see his ceiling as a top five fantasy first baseman if all things go well. I'm going to be drafting Christian Encarnacion Strand if I can uh, pass the 10th round of my drafts. Thank you guys for watching another edition of Must Draft. I'll have another one for you tomorrow. Let me know in the comments if you like these picks, who you like for must draft infielders, and we will see you all tomorrow.